All right, we are going to start soon. Um, before I start, there are a few things. Hi, right, David. Okay, there are a few things I want to uh, talk about your work that you submitted to the Google form, huh? right? <laughs> it's okay, Adam. Uh, we will, Adam, we will work. Um, whatever is put to us, we will find a way to make sure that, for me, to make sure my learners get the best whether it's from my school or from somewhere else, uh, um, students from anywhere else, it doesn't matter. Okay, so hi, Jamie. Right, about the work. Thank you so much for those who uh, submitted the work. I think two work is the speaking uh, task, which was last week. And then we had the short paragraph that you all did. Okay, um, I just want to let you know that the questionnaire that I put on the Google form is actually for... Uh, those learners who do not have the textbook, they didn't bring back their textbook or they don't have the textbook, so they couldn't refer to it to know what they need to do. Okay, but some of you answered uh, the, the image of the questionnaire by putting in the answers, that's fine, but there is no marks for that. Uh, you all need to, you know, one thing I need to remind you all learners, it's very important to read instructions. There is an instruction written there. It's written reference for uh, students who do not have the textbook. Because if you read that, you would know there is nothing else for you to do there. Now, your main task is the writing task, which you are supposed to write one paragraph about five to seven sentences. Please re let me remind you that for you to write that paragraph, you need to answer the questionnaire by interviewing either your family members Okay, or your friends through Facebook or whatever, you ask questions from your friends, get the answer, and based on that answer, you are supposed to write your paragraph. You are not supposed to write the paragraph just based on what you feel about your parents or your siblings shopping because there are several of you who just answer for the sake of answering. Okay, I do take time reading everybody's paragraph. Some of them are written very long. I did take the initiative to do it and um, correct it by through my feedback. You have to compare what you have written to what I have corrected to see what the differences are or what the changes I have made for you because that's the only way I can give feedback. All right, but I appreciate that all of you who have submitted it you submitted it because my service is free even though you are not my students i do not give i do not ask you all to pay any money so for you for all of you who have submitted um, you are smart to make use of someone's expertise to check your work all right so that uh, is something i am giving during this time uh, to all learners regardless of where you are it doesn't matter okay right so um, if you have any questions you want to ask about the task, you can ask. Uh, if not, I'm just going to continue. Good morning to everyone who have mentioned uh, here, um, Lisan and Tarani. Okay, let me start my lesson. Okay, so today um, our objective, we have uh, two skills. One is reading. So by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to, all right, now, recognize typical features of a word and sentence of a reading text. Uh, you are going to identify rhetorical questions, facts and evidence, and strong adjectives. Where they use these three rhetorical, uh, rhetorical questions, facts and evidence, and strong adjectives to influence and persuade readers. Okay, In the text that we are going to read, beware, retailers are tricking you into spending more money. All right? And then you, we will guess the meaning of eight unfamiliar words from the clues provided by other words and by context in the same text. Okay. So how do you know whether you are successful or not? You are able to identify rhetorical questions in the text. You are also able to identify sentences that state facts and evidence. You are also able to identify strong adjectives 
all these three to influence and persuade readers. And then you get to identify the words and context that act as clues to guess the meaning of eight words. I think that is very, very clear on what the objective and how you know you're successful or not, right? Okay, so the textbook that you're looking at would be textbook if you have page 44 to 45. Those who don't have textbook, don't worry. As usual, I have done the text for you. You can look at the screen, okay? Now, what is the purpose of this different, don't have to look at textbook yet, look at the slides that I've shown you, which is above my head in the YouTube. What is the purpose of these different text types? Advertisements, arguments, and charity appeals. There are three text types, advertisement, arguments, charity appeals. What is the purpose of these different text types? Anyone want to let me know what's the purpose? <laughs> the class is so quiet. Jamie says advertisement to promote something. Mm -hmm. Brian, ads promote products, arguments, quarrel each other, charity for donation, to deliver information. Jamie, arguments to justify your point. Amish, they are used to advertise something for advertisement. Advertisement is to advertise something. Charity to help the needy. You know, charity appeals. Charity, yes, to help uh, needy, but charity appeals. Charity appeals meaning someone say, you know, come, uh, I would love if you can donate. You know, now there's a lot of people asking for charity to buy food for uh, people in the lower income group where they, you know, during this um, movement control order, they cannot work anymore. They have no money. So people are appealing. That's charity appeal. Um, what is that? To help the needy. Okay, arguments involve two people that different opinions, advertisement promote something. Charity appeals are to persuade those to help unfortunate people. Mm. But these three things, advertisement, sorry, these three text types, advertisement, arguments, and charity, they all have one purpose only. You are giving me three different purposes for these three different text types, right? What is the same purpose for all these three? They might be different text types, but they have the same purpose. To advertise something. <coughs> okay, Amish said to advertise something. Hmm. Your this is critical thinking skills. What do you think? To promote an idea, Fatin says, right? Mm -hmm. Promote, Brian says promote to giving information. Okay. All right. Let me show you what the answer would be. Okay. They are meant to influence people's thinking. So when you see an advertisement or someone is arguing or as an argument text, they are meant to influence people's thinking and persuade them to change their belief or behavior, all right? So for the reason to make them buy goods or part with their money. Part their money means to say bye-bye to their money because they are giving it away, right? So all these three tax types, whether it's an advertisement or an argument, or people appealing for you to part with your money, they are all meant to influence you, okay? your thinking so that you change your belief or your mind or your behavior, all right? That's the purpose of these three different text types. They are different in the, in the form, but their purpose is the same. Got it? All right, I think that's very, very clear. It can be positive, it can be negative, Amish. It, it, some people argue for you to think negatively also. There is, okay? All right. <clears throat> okay. 
Right. Activity A in the textbook asks you to discuss this. Do you, all right, ever spend more money shopping than you intend to? This is talking about you. Do you ever spend more money shopping than you intend to? Oh, yes. Right, Jamie say, of course. Martin say, yes. Okay. Oh, of course. Yes. It's okay, Jamie. I know OFC is of course. All right. Buyi say, yes. Faris say, ha, ha, ha. Okay, Faris not sure. Oh, Liana say, never. Ooh, that's good. A lot of you say, what is intent? Intent means... um. What you originally thought of, like um, I say, I'm going to go and buy something that costs 50. That's your intent. Okay, man, that's my intention. I want to spend only 50. And then when I go shopping, I suddenly see something and I buy something that is 100 ringgit. So it's more than what I intend to spend. All right, got it, man? All right, certainly not as it would. Okay, all right. Mm. Okay, if so, if you say, many of you say yes, except the one person who said no, which is Liana. Why do you think that happens? Why do you spend more money shopping than you have aimed for? Why did you spend more money than you have intended to spend? Yvonne and Brian is, is having their own um, class going on, I think. I lie. Faris, I lie. <laughs> Why do you think you spend more than you intend to? Silence is golden. Nobody will answer why they spend more. Influenced by something. I may say influenced by something because I buy the things that I want, not I need. Okay, Brian, you buying things what you want, not what you need. Mm -hmm. Any more reason why you think it happens? I just want to buy. All right, Adam, it's it's the uh, the the influence in us. Like, oh, I want to have it, right? Okay, due to preferences, the things are too attractive. Yeah, it catches your eyes, uh, um, and you just want to. Yeah, I like to because I tend to get what I want than my need. All right, Patin, Tarani, influenced by surrounding, but not by something by something unnecessary. Okay. T say because I really like that thing. Oh, Li Hong is back due to temptations. You want because sometimes things very attra were attractive. Okay, Sammy because uh, Sammy because reference books are way more expensive than I thought, huh? So, oh, okay, you want to buy books and they are more expensive than what you thought, so you spend more money. Okay, I got it. Man, no, because I think money is difficult to earn. Oh, all right. Because maybe sometimes we buy things we want, so over budget, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the thing is too expensive but too good to ignore. Ooh, I'll see why. Easily get tempted by the offer. Okay, good. So many good answers. Fantastic. Okay, do you think that retailers, retailers influence how much you spend while shopping? If you feel that they do how do they how do they influence retailers are the owners of the shops okay they are the um, person who sells the product they are called retailers usually they have a big shopping centers or shopping malls and they are called or shops and they are called retailers so do you think retailers influence how much you spend if you feel that they do how do they influence you
is yeah showing me the users and the good quality oh, okay the retailer shows you the users and the good quality all right jamie okay um they will persuade you to buy it yes because they will tell you how many offers the items have but not showing how much the discount is okay liana if you say yes how liana adam yes they do offers like all right adam very good yeah they do offers like that buy one free one so you tend to want to buy certainly specifically when intend to purchase we would bump into an advertisement promoting different items for sale hence we would feel tempted to buy right amish true brian okay when they don't see you buying anything they try to promote until you buy more juni okay they do promotion so when they do promotion you say it's better to buy now if not it goes back to the original price we miss the chance right kylie okay by giving offers they give free gift yes menat if they have offer a promotion yes you want true okay good right now activity b okay let's see uh, sometimes in life they would force us in a humble manner all right yes amish they do in activity b right you need to look at the layout of the text i will show the, for those who have textbook look for those who don't have give me a minute i will show you right and then you need to know what do you think it is so let me show you the text where is the text right here okay this is the text you need to tell me what do you think it is right this is the tax okay for those who have textbook look at your textbook all right do not read do not read because we are just looking at the surface level of the tax we are not looking at the uh details yet we're just looking at surface looking at how the tax looks like right so this is the tax so what do you think it is right while while you are writing the answers i'm looking at the answers that is here in, yeah retailers is a huge influence okay give discount then uh, then yenzin lao good Hong Ping. Okay, Jamie, long, boring paragraph. Mm. Okay, but what do you think it is? What is it? What is it? What do you think it is? An article. Yes, Yvonne. A guide on how to stay skeptical when shopping. All right, Amesh. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you all think, right? Good. Any more? What do you think it is? Don't go into details, please. I'm still waiting. Ah, uh, tell you, don't because the retailer say and buy things. Mm, okay, tell you don't because the retailer say and makes you buy the things. Okay, be careful. Right, it's an advice. Yes, okay, it is an article. Just like uh, Yvonne said, what it is, is an article. Right, and then where may this article appear? Where you think this article about beware, about retailers, where would it appear? Yes, man, about how a retailer tricks us, an article, good tarani, an article, right, it's an advice, yes. On internet, okay, an article to advise people, Adam, good, online, Brian say can it appears in a magazine, right, exactly, it's in a magazine, it can be an online magazine, it can be in uh, the normal magazine that we buy, 
it can be yeah it can be in a newspaper a special column right it can be mm, definitely not in shop in a shopping mall right okay yes they would not have this kind of things in a shopping mall then they all won't be able to sell anything all right look at the picture what does it show now for you in the textbook you can see the picture those without textbook here here's the picture that more or less look like that okay so they have the topic there and then they have the picture there so what's what what is the picture i'm sure you are so used to this kind of picture what is that what what does it show what does it show a supermarket mm -hmm. <coughs> a shopping mall does that show a supermarket it shows a supermarket but what do you call that it's not a shopping mall um you want uh, not you want sorry sorry you want hong thing it's not a shopping mall yes uh, liana it can be a convenience store tesco all right tarani is an aisles in the supermarket Yes, it's showing you an aisle. All right? Yes, exactly, Bobby. Yeah, a place where your mom where mom spend an hour in. Yes, a well-kept section, drinks department. Uh yes. Okay. Village grocer, I don't want to know the name of the shops because that's not what I do. Okay. So what does it show? It shows a supermarket aisle. It's an aisle. So you all the rows that people walk is known as aisle. Yes, exactly, Brian. It's a beverage department. Okay. Right. So you don't you have to go to the aisle. That's what we call it in English aisle. Okay. Look at the title. What is the text about? So you look at this title. Beware, retailers are tricking you into spending more money. So if you look at that title, what do you think? What is the text about? By just looking at the title, what is the text about? Beware, I like the word beware, retailers are tricking you into spending more money. If I'm the retailer, I'd be like, ha, 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 ha. reminding one to stay careful when spending, advice for not to get tricked by retailers about how to not fall into the trap of retailers, beware when shopping, how to avoid being tricked by retailers, Okay, good answers. Uh, Amish, Faris, Brian, LCY, Tarani, Manat, Adam. Think before you buy. Exactly, Adam. Think before buying. Jamie, yes. Right. Warning people not to get tempted. By, okay. Right. So, uh, you are all right. Okay. If you look at the text, you will see those who have textbook, you will see there are missing, uh, there are gaps, missing, missing sentences, right? Now, do not pay attention to the missing sentences in the text when we are going to read later, okay? I'm just going to show for those who don't have the textbook, right, that there are missing sentences like the one here, Right here is a missing sentence, okay, and then you have another one here at the beginning of a paragraph, and then you have another one here in the center, middle of the paragraph, and also number four here, and then you will have number five in another paragraph, and you have number six, which is the last paragraph, it is at the beginning of the last paragraph, right. If you remember when you were in um, Form 3, you had this kind of text in Part 5 of your reading paper. Am I right? Part 5 of your reading paper, correct? So, 
you need to know that you might, because uh, I've not seen the new paper, how you do that, you might have the same thing for Form 5, where you have to look at sentences and fill in the gap. But please bear in mind, today's lesson is not focusing on that. Okay, but I would not uh, um, teach you the strategy. I will teach you the strategy on how to do this in this lesson so that it will help you to tackle this kind of text when you get it in your exam paper if the word is if, if it is there. All right, my gut feeling say it is, but I don't know. I might be wrong. Okay, I don't know. There is not nothing for sure until I see a sample paper. Okay, but all the strategy that I teach you can be applied in any kind of text. Right, let me continue with that. Okay, okay, we have done that. I'm not going to go there. Activity B, skimming. I have taught you skimming, right? I've taught you skimming, okay? So, I want you to tell me how do you skim? Can you tell me how do you skim? Because I've taught you many times how to skim. So can you tell me how do you skim? Just write down what you remember. The strategy to skim. Nah, Adam, forget. It's okay, Adam. Look out for the keywords. Need to. Ah, okay, Liana, read the first and the last paragraph. I love you, Liana. Read the first and last sentences. I love you, Leon. Right. Okay, I love you, Yvonne. Read first and last paragraph. Read the first sentence and the last sentence. Yes, yes. What is skimming? Okay, um. Skimming is to glance quickly or to read very fast to get an idea of what the text is about. You are not looking into details, all right? Huh? You quickly read to get an idea what the text is about, all right? Okay, it's okay, man. It's okay. There are some people, first lesson, some people's so main lesson. I'm just checking those who have been with me since I started this on the first day uh, on March 24th, okay? So read the first and last sentence, Juni. Fatin, read the first two sentences and the last, yes, Fatin, right? Kylie, read, okay, Tarani, the first and last paragraph. Mm, read the topic. Any key points in the paragraph? Okay. Some of your answers are answers to read for specific details. That will be scanning. This is skimming. Okay, just to remind you how to skim. Okay, so I ask you this question. How do you skim? It's a revision of the skimming strategy. Okay, so step one that we all just did. Look at the picture. Look at the title. It's very important. That's how we go and browse. You know, internet. You all look at certain articles or certain things. You just look at the picture, the title. That's skimming. You don't read. You see the title interesting, the picture interesting. Only then you start reading, right? Okay. Oh, my God, Brian. Wait, Brian. Then you read the first and the last paragraph. You have to read the first and last paragraph only to give you an idea what the whole thing is about. You don't have to worry about the one in the middle. But to confirm your ideas, whether you got the right idea is you, you read the first and last lines or the first two and last two lines of each paragraph. If the paragraph is short, just the first sentence, last sentence. If it's very long, maybe you want to read the first two and the last two. Okay? So this is, these are the steps to skim. Look at topic, look at picture, read first paragraph, last paragraph, confirm by reading in the middle paragraph, first sentence, last sentence. So before you get, you see for me, your answers are not important. 
the strategy is important. If you get the strategy right, you will always get your answers right. That's it. If you don't have this strategy, you will just simply decide on the answer based on gut feeling. This is not based on gut feeling. This is based on evidence. You see this evidence, this is the answer. Okay? Clear? Everyone? So, any reading text that you get and they ask you what is the idea or the main idea, this is how you do it. What is the purpose of the text? This is how you do it. Okay? You don't read all the details inside because that confuses you more. When you are looking for purpose, you're looking for ideas. Okay, good. Right. So what you need to do now is, I want you, this is, I'm repeating the picture and the title. So you get an idea what is it about. Now you need to, this is the first step, right? The second step is to read the first and last paragraph. If um, you notice, when I shared with you the paragraph, I have already highlighted it in blue because I want you to notice the first paragraph. This is the first paragraph. You can read silently the first paragraph. Okay. And then... You read the last paragraph, sadly, is only this. Okay? Right. Once you read that, you get an idea what the text is about. Okay? Right? So, whatever idea is in your head, okay, now what do you do? You say that, okay, I think it's about buying so much stuff because first paragraphs tell me that, you know, I'm, I, buy, I, I go with the list, I come up with more. And there's a reason for this. And then when I look at the last paragraph, it tells me that don't let them get away with it. Oh, okay. That means they are doing something, you know, to influence me to do something that I shouldn't. So how... Do I confirm my answer? I look at the next paragraph, which I also highlighted in blue, the important lines. Smell is a common trick used to get shoppers spending. Oh, there's a trick. So I, I just, then I want to look at the last line of that paragraph. Does it confirm? Many restaurants and fast food outlets use the same trick and send kitchen smells into the street. Oh, so it tells me smell is one trick. Look at the second paragraph. More popular items are usually in the middle of the aisle so that you have to walk further, pass more products to reach them. Okay, so many companies pay shops to place their product. Okay, so it looks like I have to walk to so many, pass through, through so many products to go to the product I want. Okay, right. So, and then the next paragraph. Have you ever noticed that certain shelves looks untidy as if customers have been moving uh, everything around. Oh yes, I have to look. Then you look, customers believe they are looking at reduced price products or a very popular promotion. Okay, so it tells us all this. And last one here, even the way the floors are designed can make you spend more. How? If you can't see what is getting, if you can't see that it's getting dark outside, you are more likely to take your time inside the shop. Oh, Okay. And then retailers would quickly go out of business if we walk straight in, buy what we need and walk out. Oh, is it true? The more you spend inside, the more money you're likely to spend. So that's all you need to read. Okay? I, need, I cannot see if you have written anything. Okay, right. So I, I'm looking at all your answers here. So that is what you need to do, okay, to try and figure out what the purpose or main idea of the text is. Okay? Once you have done that and you look, like I showed you, first paragraph, last paragraph, look at each paragraph, first line, second line, uh, uh, sorry, last line to confirm, then only you can do the next thing. Okay? 
which is right question so read the text quickly which is skimming reading text quickly is skimming okay so when you skim the text quickly look at the topic look at the title look at the paragraph one uh, first paragraph last paragraph each paragraph first line last line first line last line then you answer the question what is the purpose of the text you already got the idea what would be the best answer then so some of you say it's thinking it, it's about marketing strategy bobby say kirtana say these guys are smart yes they are brian i'm thinking that this article talk about reasons of why we buy more things than the shopping list right david think before you buy so you have this idea all in your head which one a b c or d would best fit what you have been thinking brian say c let's list, let's see what other people say right you want to say c c the article could be telling us about the steps how retailer treat us to buy hmm yes maybe it is tricks in order so okay yes tarani amish yes so what would the best answer be everyone choose c yeah i know somebody will choose d <laughs> Okay, yeah, because but when once I have a learner choose D, man, man, can you tell me why you choose D instead of C? Look at D. D is to warn people. Okay, we got another one. Nordins also say ah uh, Adha, sorry Adha also say D to warn people of the dangers. Are they are they are they considered dangers? You see that the term you use dangers. Is it to warn? Is it a warning article to warn people the dangers? Kirtana said they can be dangerous. I think we like to use the term dangerous uh, so uh, loosely. Right, man say no. Jamie say no. <laughs> Brian, retailers can change can change into terrorists. Mm. Money is dangerous when shopping. Yeah, now yes, now it's dangerous. People have no money; they just rob you. Okay, all right. Is there a danger when you go shopping? I mean, when you're going to a shopping uh, mall, is it da a danger, or are you trying to tell people to be more careful? Yes, Adam. They just advise people to beware, beware, right? Just because the word beware there, it doesn't mean talking about dangers of shopping. It's talking about to be alert about the tricks, okay, and traits of all these retailers. So the best answer would be, I don't think yes, C. Okay, that's the best answer. The best answer. I'm not saying that. Uh, your answer D is not right, but the best answer out of the four A and B is totally out. Is C. Now this is how even in your exam you will have just like your PT three. I remembered out of the three three choices you have two would be so close that you are not sure. I want to choose B or D, B or C, or A or B. You're not sure, right? So you need to be very clear by looking at. The whole thing, all right. The whole picture to get the best answer, right? Okay, done. Let's continue. Okay, now we are going into the important thing. How do you recognize typical features at word set uh, and sentence of a uh, level uh, of the reading text, right? So writers, okay, use certain features or techniques. To influence or persuade readers, like all of us readers, when they use rhetorical questions, facts and evidence, strong adjectives like starving. Okay, 
Now, rhetorical questions are questions that actually do not need to be answered. They just ask you the question with, without wanting an answer from you. Okay? It's just like, you know, um, someone say, hi, how are you? They don't care whether you are fine or not. It's just a, a, a rhetorical question. Or another one, no, are you eating when you're eating? And people say, oh, you're having lunch. Sometimes you'll be wondering, why is the person saying that? It's just a rhetorical question. Okay, to um, just have a conversation with you. Right? With no purpose, actually. Just to make you think most of the time. Rhetorical. You don't need to answer. Okay. Now, I want you to skim the text to find examples of rhetorical questions. Look at the text I'm going to show for those who don't have textbook. Okay, right? Examples of rhetorical questions. So, this is paragraph one. Do you have rhetorical questions? You don't have to copy the whole question or the whole sentence, just, you know, keywords that you see that would help you give the answer. Okay? Yes, Tarani, rhetorical question is very uh, commonly used in public speaking, in debate. Okay, first line, Ang said first line, you have the rhetorical question. Okay, let's look. Any more that we have? All right, look, let's look at the next one. First sentence, yep. Mm -hmm. Any more rhetorical questions? Yes, everyone say first line in the first paragraph. Yes, in Yen Zin Lao. Right. Kylie, twice as much stuff. Mm -hmm. First line of the fourth paragraph. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any more? First sentence. Yes, Jemmy. First line. Yes, Tarani. Okay. Any more? Fourth paragraph, first sentence. Yes, Yvonne. Yes, man. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the answers that you got would be this one, okay? Have you ever wondered, blah, 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 with twice as much fun, or as much stuff? Okay, right. So, you have that, okay? And then you have, have you ever noticed moving everything around, paragraph four? Okay. So, this, in the text, the person is asking the question just to make you think, they're not asking for an answer because they know the answer is yes. Have you ever wondered the answer is yes? Have you ever noticed the answer is yes? Right? So that is the two um, examples of a rhetorical questions. Yeah, okay. Thank you for letting me know, uh, Yvonne. Yeah, I'm preparing a lot of my, my wonder here is wrong, okay? Yes, you are right, Yvonne. Okay. I'm sorry because I prepare a lot of uh, PowerPoint for all of you, so sometimes I don't check my work. But thank you for pointing it out, Yvonne. Next, facts and evidence. Can you show find facts and evidence that the purpose is to persuade? Persuade. You see wrongly? Is it? Okay. All right. Persuade. Yes, Tarani, rhetorical questions make readers think or grab their attention. Yes, when you do that, exactly. All right, Amish, thanks, thanks. I, I'm not opening my text. I'm just looking what I have over here. So if you say it's wrong, I accept. If you say it's right, I accept. So any facts and evidence, please? The one that you think. I have to show again for those who don't have the text. Where are you? Yep, here. So look at the text and see 
Okay. Right. Ish. Hmm. If you have any facts and evidence that is used, that have been used to persuade. Okay, I don't know. I, uh, the reason I, I highlighted blue is for the activity A. Eh? All right, so don't get, don't get influenced by my highlight, highlighted words. Highlighted sentence, I mean. All right, paragraph three, line two. Mm -hmm. Smell, spending, all right. Ang, um, paragraph two. Okay, Adam. Any more? First line of paragraph four, okay. I don't get what the question is. The question is, Jemmy, I'm asking you to find facts and evidence, not facts and evidence, uh, what facts and evidence that the writer used with the purpose to influence or persuade the reader? Okay, I'm going to repeat. What facts and evidence that were used by the writer for the purpose of influencing and persuading the reader? Okay, Jamie, got it? Interesting words. I'm waiting for some answers because I don't know whether Jamie understands or not. Jamie is keeping quiet. Amish, we have already moved away from rhetorical questions. We are now going to facts and evidence because there are three ways that a writer tries to influence and persuade a, a reader. Okay? All right. So we have done first. Now we have done second. Right, so I'm going to give you the answer. Okay, so answers for facts and evidence. Most supermarket now welcome. Okay, paragraph two, lines one to three. More likely to buy food. Okay, that's the, they give you a fact about most and then they give you the evidence. Another one is in paragraph two also, lines two and three. Products that shops want to sell, okay, and up to maximum attention. All right, so if I want to show you, I can show you here so that you get to get to see what I'm trying to say. Paragraph two, okay, here, most supermarket here, welcome customers with the smell of fresh bread or roast chicken to make you hungry in case you are much more likely to buy food. Okay, right? Products that shops want maximum attention. Okay, I think that is not paragraph two. Huh? Sorry, that's not paragraph two. That would be paragraph three. Paragraph three. Yes, paragraph three. Sorry, yeah, paragraph three. For the second one is paragraph three. Okay, this is wrong, paragraph three. And then you have paragraph six. Shopping malls usually, okay, blah, 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 harder to find your way out. So that would 
be examples of yes yes Li Hong you're right so that will be paragraph six for that is an example of facts and evidence okay right the last the last um, strategy that a writer use okay is to write strong adjectives and one of the adjectives has been given which is starving okay starving is in the text so the strong adjectives that are being used okay i'm going to just straight away like if you see the answer is starving in paragraph two line three you also have the word promote okay when the word promote to give you an idea they are doing something to force someone to do something maximum the word maximum tells you okay how the degree of things people will do is the maximum in paragraph three line three you also have when the word that comes like complicated complicated shows how difficult things are okay so these are examples of yeah popular brian there's another word popular is to give you and show you how something is fam very famous so these are examples of strong adjectives that are being used okay so you need to be alert about this when you are writing when you read untidy is not it's messy would be worse messy would be a stronger word than untidy actually uh you need to be alert of this because if you are writing to influence someone these are three things that you can do to write you use rhetorical questions you use facts and evidence and you also use uh, strong adjectives okay right so you all get this all of you clear about this everyone before I move on, I need you all to be clear about these three things. Okay, clear. Right. Uh, where am I going? I don't want this. I have to go on to the next one. I forgot to do something. Okay. Guessing meaning of words. Right. So how do you guess meaning of words? This is a strategy. Just now, I teach you the strategy to scheme. Now, the strategy to guess meaning of words. I am repeating myself again because I've taught you this. Look at the highlighted words. Okay, these are the highlighted words, right? For those who have not seen it, I'm going to show you in a while, but let me show you the strategy. You look at the surrounding words that the highlighted word is being used. And then what is the context, meaning what is the paragraph about? Or what's the title about? Okay, and then you make your own guess. Oh, I think this word means this. Then only you look at the provided meaning and then select the best or closest to the one you guess. That is the best way of doing this. Not look at the choices given and try to fit in because you might get the answer wrong. You don't want to get the answer wrong. You have to do it this way. Okay, so let's uh, me show to the rest. Sorry. Okay, the highlighted words, all right, the highlighted words are in yellow. Okay, like retailers, okay, right, we have been discussing the word retailers so long. Okay. Kirtana, you're in the wrong form. <laughs> no wonder, Kirtana. Kirtana, you didn't come at the nine o'clock class. Bye, bye. Okay. Okay, so... Retailers, what do you think retailers mean? What does retailer mean? What do you think it means? We've been discussing, okay, a person or business that sells goods. Good, Amish. Just quickly, just whatever comes to your mind. So you look at the word, retailers, you have beware, they have tricking to spend more money. So that would be the context is being used. So what do you think it means? A person that sells you stuff, person who sells, okay, all right. Let's continue to the next one, okay, all right. I can't go here. Why can't I go? All right, next word, starving. Huh. They talk about food, roast chicken to make you hungry. 
in, ca in which case you are much, much likely to buy food. Imagine if you're starving and then they talk about restaurant and fast food. So it must be something, all right, that has to do with food and you being, right, hungry, famished. Yes, very good, everyone. Okay, food, very hungry, extremely hungry, super hungry. Yes, starving is more than hunger, is the, the, the extreme hunger. Okay, very, very hungry, right. Good, let's look at the next word, aisles. Some of you, if I didn't explain just now, you'd be like thinking, what, what are aisles? More popular items are in the middle of the aisle so that you can have to walk further, pass more products to reach them. And then you talk about products. So what would an aisle mean? You have to guess based on how it's being used here. What do you think it means, aisles? Yes, Tarani. Right. A lane. Right. Shelf to put stuff. An aisle is a lane. Right. Jamie, to put stuff is not an aisle. <coughs> an aisle is a rose. Okay. You walk through the aisles. Right. Hmm. Space for walking between two rows. Right, Brian. Place to walk. Pathways. Yes. I like that you're coming with way pathways, roads, lanes, passage, passage, right? Okay, all right. Lane, yes, exactly. Next word, promote. What do you think promote means? Promote. I think all of you know what promote. Pro, you look at the sentence that is being used. Promote. Want to promote a place at eye level Ooh. to get maximum attention, advertise, right, Jamie? <laughs> Offers, right, Adam? Give some introduction, good. Advertise, introduce, and attract. Yes, Lee Hong. Give recommendation, yes, LCY. Advertise, good. Yes, advertising. Good. Advertise and offer. Excellent. Next. Hey, sorry. Maximum. What does maximum mean? What does maximum mean? Full. To the absolute full, to the most whole, right? Good. Full attention. You until fully, full of attention, highest attention, the most, highest point, the most. Okay, good. Trolley. What do you think about trolley? Sorry, trolley, trolley. I think you know what is trolley. I think Malay language also have the word trolley. So trolley shouldn't be a difficult word. Trolley. A cart, yes, a shopping cart. You need to know one is British, one is American, huh? Okay? All right, a shopping cart, supermarket one, the highest. Okay, the basket with the wheel, right? I like you all, basket with the wheels. Yes, a trolley, shopping cart, cart, right? Excellent, wonderful, awesome. Complicated? Complicated. Very good. A metal cut for you to carry. Yes, a basket with bills. Good. The thing that we put. Right. Something you need if you want to go shopping. Yes, Adam. A metal. Very important. Yes. If not, cannot carry all the stuff. Right? Tarani, a large metal. Things that you can put your kids inside. <laughs> yeah, if they're baby. Yes. Too detailed. Mm, complex. Right. That is for complicated. Good. Challenging or hard. Yes, Amesh. When you are when you confuse, it will be complicated. Uh, more, it, it is more confusing, more complex, difficult to understand, too complex, right? Very good. Intricate. Many interconnection parts or elements. Wow, Jamie, very good. Complex or hard, difficult to understand, hard to find and messy. Hard to understand. 
cumbersome. Mm, that's a very good uh, vocab, cumbersome. Okay, what about escalators? Escalators. Moving staircase. All right. You go on moving staircase. Hmm. Tricky. Tricky would be complicated. Yes, Zara. Crazy English. <laughs> Electronic stairs. A moving stairs. Stairs that can move in. That can move. Huh? You will see it at a mall. All right. There's a difference. Huh? Escalator, travel later, elevator. Ah, you must be careful. Escalator, travel later, and elevator. Hmm. So make sure you know these three th uh, three um, things well. Escalator, travel later, and what was I saying? Elevator. Sometimes people are confused between elevators and escalators. Okay. Okay. So that's are the words. I think all of you are okay, right? So, you have already guessed, now you are going to look, okay, at the highlighted words, and you are already guessing, because I know some of you look at the text to give me the answer, it's fine. So, what would the answer be for difficult to understand? So, you remember the words that we have difficult to understand? Ah, suddenly uh, Liana has gone a moving staircase. Uh, oh, moving staircase. All right. Difficult to understand. Complicated. Anyone else? No, only two person have answered. Difficult to understand means complicated. 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 Awesome, right? Complicated. Because you already look at the context and you get the answer. So, a basket on wheels. So, I, I say that some of you have uh, looked at the answers and that's why you gave me a basket on wheels. Basket on wheels would be trolley. Okay, right? Exactly. Okay, a person or business that sells goods will be known as <coughs> All right, Jamie, retailers, 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 retailers are bad. Okay, that uh, retailers are bad is not the answer, Li Hong. Okay, I just want the word. Okay. Right, very good. Next, increase the sales or popularity of something. Promote, 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 promote. Person, right? Not a person. Increase the sales or popularity of something. It's not a person. Retailer is a person. Promote, promote, promote. Okay. Okay. The answer is promote. Next, the space for walking between two rows of shelves or seats. Yes, even in the cinema. Okay, you go to the cinema, there are seats. Okay, you go to um, any halls and there's a row for you to walk. That's what it's called. Exactly. Oh, yes, yes. The last question, Beishan, it is talking about people. Yeah. Right, good. Moving staircase, moving stairs. All of you know the answer, I'm sure. Excellent. Thumbs up for all of you. Yes, escalators. And then the greatest that is possible. <laughs> All right. 
everyone is giving me the answers. Yes. Right. Okay, feeling very hungry. I think all of you know the answer. The answer is starving. Okay. Now, I just want you to be careful. You think that it's very easy. In your exam, you never know how tough the word is. Please remember, in the exam, they don't give you the word. Most of the time, they give you the meaning. Correct? So, you need to look at the words and find which word because they won't have highlighted the words. Right? Okay, I know you're all very hungry. I'm also very hungry. It's already 12 o'clock, right? Famished. Okay. Right. So, we are not going to do activity E because I am looking at the time. Okay. Um, we are going to do this. I need you to... Okay. You see, our lesson is over actually, but... And without discussing activity C, okay, based on the plan that we teachers gave, we are not supposed to do activity C, but I think you wouldn't like that, right? So, I am going to give you the uh, link, right? I want you to do this on your own, okay? Read the tips box because it provides the strategy to complete the task, right? The tips box. So, the tips box have this. Step one, they, they don't write step there. I'm putting the step. Read the whole text so that you get the overall idea. You know the text that we read just now? Beware about the retailers. I think you already get the whole idea. Correct? Hold on, David. Hold on. Then you read the sentences before and after each gap. And then look at the seven, oh, I cannot remember. Uh, seven, yes. Seven given sentences. You have to read at the seven given sentences. And also the sentences before and after each gap. And then you look for clues in both the text and given. Sorry, not given without S, huh? given sentences. So, one thing you look at is the reference item. Meaning it, they, this, there. In the sentence before and after. Alright, sentence linkers. However, furthermore, therefore, this will give you clues on what the correct sentence should be in. Right? And then the correct option that you choose must logically complete the writer's meaning. And don't forget, it must gr be grammatically correct in that gap so that the whole paragraph makes sense. So this is the strategy that I want you to learn. Okay? Because it will uh, be very helpful when you have to do this kind of task for a reading text. In case the exam, they ask you that. I know some people are impatient. They want the form. Right. Before I give you the um, link, I need to tell you this. Number one, okay, Make sure you write your email address correctly because there has been one uh, student who sent me the work and then when I, I just say send the score, it will use the email that you have given and then it will be sent back to me because you give me the wrong email address. Your email, the person spelled as Gamil, G-A-M-I-L. Okay? So... There is no Gamil at gamil.com. So, I get back that. Number two, if you are using the Gmail that is given by the government through Google Classroom, I cannot send you the score because my Gmail is not the one that the government gave. Mine is the normal Gmail. If I use the Gmail the government gives, okay, the Google Classroom one, I cannot still send those who use the normal Gmail. It, you must be in the same system. You must be in the same system for it to interact. So if you use Google Classroom Gmail, you will not get a response from me because I do send it out and it will bounce back to me. Okay? So use the normal Gmail. Because if I use the, 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 the 
let me use your email when you send it to me and I send it back to you, you would get a response if you use the normal email. Okay? You're clear now what I'm saying, okay? All right, I want you to get clear this. We must be in the same loop to be able to give emails to each other. The moment you are in the different loop, you can send to me, but I cannot send it to you. Okay? All right, so this is the thing. And if you really need my email address, okay, if you really need my email address, I'm giving it here, right? You can have it if you want. Right, so that's the, the thing, right? So the next lesson will be on Wednesday and we will be doing language awareness, your favorite subject, not mine, but it's yours. Right? Eh, well, okay. It's your favorite subject. So that will be the next lesson. Okay, this, this work that I've given you will tell you immediately your answer. Okay? You love that. <laughs> All right. So, um, we, I'll see you on Wednesday. Take care. You have no questions, right? Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I've taught you um, the strategies. What's important for me is the strategies for the language skills. Okay? Yes, I mean, not, it is still open. Now, I, I'm very surprised that many of you do not know how to take advantage of someone who gives free service. That's what makes me laugh. You all, I don't know, you're all willing to pay money and get this kind of service that I give instead of a, trying to send your work and get a free command from me. Okay? All right? So it's weird. I don't know. You all love to pay money, is it? You all don't like free stuff. Mm. So see you all later. Take care and bye-bye.